Well, take two. My microphone died on me during the last recording, so using a backup. Alright, so this will be a run through for question two, topic five, hot diode operating point calculation. Most of this uses just the uh, Mathematica file, so it makes it pretty easy. I'll explain a couple of things as we go along, just in case you need to know or want to know uh, what how everything works. You can know, I guess. Um, but it's all pretty simple. So it's just equations again, like 5.1. Don't have to worry too much about theory behind it. So I sure don't. <laughs> right, moving on. Um, yeah, you have two different kinds of diagrams here. The first one we see here is a uh, one with a voltage source. And uh, and the second one will also show a uh, current source. So you'll have one with an independent voltage source and one with an independent current source. This is why we have two sections here. I'll explain those a little bit later. Uh, but first thing you want to do is you want to see your values up here and then place them into the uh, top section. So I have five pico, that's five, and I put a guide here, P is equal to 12, equal to 12, do you change that? N is 1.8, and like the last one, VT will always be 26 millivolts, so you don't have to change that. And lastly, you have your R1, minus 750, and 9100. From this point, shift enter, so you assign those values there. Uh, shift entering here also serves another purpose because these two are separate and you only use one or the other, you don't use both. Uh, if you if you try a question first going through here, shifting uh, running this will clear all the variables in the entire thing. If they're blue, they are unassigned. So you want them all to be blue after this point. You know you've done it right then. Moving on. Uh, we have a voltage source, so we use this top one, put our value of the voltage source up here, 8 volts. Everything from here is all solved on its own. The way it works is basically, it, it's a, it reduces to a Thevenin equivalence. Our Thevenin is just, as we uh, zero the voltage source, it creates a short circuit, and then R1 is in parallel with R2, it's just this, you should, be, you should know that by now, really. And uh, for the voltage source, we want the voltage going over R2 because it's in parallel with the diode. So it's a uh, voltage times R2 on the uh, sum of the resistors. Okay, so that's easy. So shift over here. This goes black. This top one should stay blue. These two will go black because they are assigned up here. So long as this one here is blue, you shouldn't have to worry about it. And then from here, uh, you can skip ahead if you don't want to hear the explanation for this. So just wait until these numbers change and yeah, don't have to worry about it. But for the explanation for this, basically what happens is that you have an equation that you can't reduce to a single variable because of the log. It's called a transcendental equation, if I recall correctly. Look it up in the help if you're not sure. Um, so basically what you do is you start off with a value for ID here, you don't worry about the 0 and the 1, that's just how this deals with it separately. You start off with a value for ID, uh, the help file suggests 1 million, but it really doesn't matter, so long as you do any positive number, you'll get the same result. And from here, it assigns it here, runs this equation, and gives the value for ID 1. Another value for ID. Uh, the book, you read this next section, this next section, sorry, recursively calls uh, that value over the equation over and over and over and over again to refine the value of ID. Every time it, it does it, it reassigns ID zero to the last value that it got, and it keeps going, going, and going until it gets within 99.99% uh, .99 of each other. Because eventually, you run this enough, you will get the same answer over and over again. Because obviously. ID has to equal ID, and uh, so yeah, that's that's how this works basically. You can look it up in the help again; it'll show it there. The main reason why I made this Mathematica file uh, the first time around in my first year of doing this subject was because I didn't want to do it manually, 
and recursively inputting functions is just a pain in the ass. So that's how this all started. Fun fact. And basically once you have this, really once you have whatever one you've used here, you can just shift enter here, copy and paste your results. They are in the same order as they're displayed on the page. Click try, voila, 100%. And now our next example for a current source. Remember to change your values, is68 pico, doesn't have to change that, nice and easy. N is 1.2, 26 millivolts, don't have to worry about that. 36, 360, sorry, 7500. Shift enter, very important. It is a current source this time, so we use the second one, put our value for the current source, 118 milliamps. It's pretty much always been milliamps, I haven't seen anything else. So just keep an eye out, make sure it does have the little M if it doesn't change this accordingly. Uh, and basically how this works, again, zero the sources, creates a short circuit, this disappears, R1 is in parallel, as in series with R2, so that's just this. And then your general uh, V7 uh, is equal to I0 times R7, which in this case is just R1. You'll see if you, if you convert this from a 0 to a 7 and multiply these together, and yeah, the, the, the R1 goes up here, V7 and pretty simple stuff, really. The, uh, the voltage will the voltage will be what it is here because that, that R1 will move up to this node and that whole line will disappear because they're in series. There's no voltage division. Okay, so shift enter there and I've already explained this, shift enter there, copy here, please don't fail like last time. Good try, 100%. That's it, easy. 